I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial, no hate can keep me down No matter what my haters say I proudly rep both of my races today I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial and no hate Salam alaikum YouTube was cracking it's your angry biracial back with another video Y'all know how I do I gotta keep my foot on the necks of modern males 24 7 It is late. I'm tired Mrs. Angry biracial is running your boy ragged Going store to store buying stuff for a new house. I don't know how you ladies do it. I can put on some gloves and box, lift weights, play football or basketball all day. But a couple of hours going store to store with Mrs. Angry Biracial has got me worn out. All that being said, I got another good show for y'all today. So grab your favorite drinks and popcorn and let's dive right in. There's no way y'all would rather be trapped in the woods with a bear over a man. When I was 12, I was waiting in line for the Popeye's chicken sandwich when I got catcalled by two grown men and the entire restaurant laughed at me. When I was 13, I got followed around to Walmart and the guy later on asked my mom for her number so he could get closer to me. My mom didn't give it to me. When I was 14, I got off the bus and I was followed by a grown man who was persistent about getting my phone number. When I was 15, I was inside a Walmart trying to buy gushers for my brother and this older man came up to me and when I told him my age, he started screaming at me and told me I was lying. When I was 16, I was driving alone. This was actually last November. I was at a red light and then this car with a group of guys, they pulled up and one of them tried hitting on me and I was like, leave me alone. And then they started screaming at me and cussing me out. So I like had to speed off. In my most recent relationship, I later on found out that the stuff that happened wasn't normal and I was in fact assaulted by the person that I loved. And even in my videos, you can see in the comments, some people are like, can I essay you or can I grape you? Yes, I know it's not all men, but I would rather pick the bear because at least the bear wouldn't get offended if I told them I was picking somebody. That young lady has been harassed by older men her entire life. And because she is brave enough to tell her story to share what has happened to her, other modern males get offended. They try to discredit her. They say hideous, insulting crap in the comments, hoping to intimidate her. Instead of empathizing and taking a moment to be understanding and comforting in the comments, they prove her point and solidify her choice in choosing the bear. You know the saying, hit dogs holler. Those of you getting in your feelings and getting upset because a woman chooses a bear, are most likely the creeps they are talking about. All this because I said no when he asked if he could sit next to me and my friend. I just think that sometimes there's individuals that are just Yeah, 
Modern men have to be some of the slowest creatures on the planet. That dude approached those women with most of his teeth missing. His two front teeth were just gone. He either got really bad hygiene, meaning he don't brush his teeth, so his teeth rotted out, or someone knocked him out. But I don't understand how modern men can't take a hint, can't feel the room or feel the vibe. It was painfully obvious those women wanted nothing to do with you. So why try to force your presence on someone who doesn't want you around? And why do they always channel their inner hotep? They always speak some weird woke nonsense, thinking it's going to impress somebody and change their mind. No one cares about your thoughts on who's black and who isn't. And it's crazy how they always try to make their preferences seem black when they're not. That in itself speaks volumes to their self-hate. Because if you don't like black women, then why try to go for a preference that acts and talks and pretends to be black? I'm kind of getting a little off topic here, but, but let me cook for a minute. They never go for the down-home country farm raisins in the sweet potato. No seasoning super, super white woman. They always go for wiggers. They always go for preferences that try to act, talk, and look like black women. They love the copy, but not the original. They say they don't like black women because their attitude. They say black women are too masculine and too aggressive. Yet they get with a Becky that exemplifies those things a hundredfold. They get with a Mexican that exaggerates all those things that they said they don't like in black women. The problem has never been black women. It has always been self-hate. They hate the wombs that bore them. They hate themselves so much that they hate the only woman that can create them. They hate the root and the fruit. And the hate goes even further. If they have a biracial son from that preference, they feel intimidated by and jealous of their biracial sons. The same sons that they created, but love and uplift and are proud of their biracial daughters. Those men are as lost and as confused as can be. And quite frankly, black women are better off without them. Get up while I'm pregnant. I'm going to get beat up while I'm pregnant. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. No, I was going to say it again, though. I do got it, but you're saying it again while you're going down the steps. You say I'm going to get beat up? I, if I get arrested for something I'm not doing? You did do it, though. It's not something you didn't do. It's something you did. You just admitted to choking me and grabbing me in the doorway, did you not? So this did is you not? That's not what you did. You grabbed me by my neck. 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 Okay, so you want to say that? Okay. So when you uh, choked me three times when your mom wasn't here, that's something you did. Okay. So that. Okay. So I'm going to get beat up for that. That's something you did. That's something you did. No, that's something you did. No, that's something you did though. So you gonna get me beat up because of that? You get Cause you, get, cause you got locked up. You okay. Well. So I'm getting assault, a threat too, because I'm an animal. Did you all see those holes in the wall? There were fist-sized holes in the bedroom door, in the wall down the stairs. Those are all telltale signs of an unhinged and unstable man and of a woman suffering at the hands of that unhinged and unstable man. If he can punch a hole in the wall to try to intimidate you, then trust and believe you will be the next thing that he hits. Black femicide is on the rise. And one of the most dangerous times for a black woman is when she's pregnant. Because these deranged modern males will do anything to escape responsibility, to escape accountability, to escape child support, to escape being a father. And that includes deleting you. I'm going to speak to you the way that I would speak to my daughters. If a man can call you out of your name, can threaten you, can try to intimidate you, can yell in your face, can punch holes in the wall, then it's only a matter of time for he deletes you. Now is the time to escape. Not tomorrow, not next week, not when you feel it's convenient. It's now. Pieces of crap men like him deserve a firing squad. And it's disgusting that so many women can't enjoy being pregnant, can't enjoy the process of becoming a mother. So many have to fight, run, escape, and flee from violent, deranged, unhinged modern males. 
who want you to be their doormat, to be their slave. And if you're watching my video and you're going through this right now, I need you to lean forward and really hear me when I tell you, you deserve better. You are worthy. You are beautiful. You are amazing. And it's not your fault. You are loved, you are cherished, and you are wanted. Don't spend another second with someone that treats you like that. Leave the house, run to your nearest emergency room. Let them know you're being abused and you need help. Forget your apartment, forget your stuff, your safety, your well-being, and that of your children is more important than anything. Niggas be so quick to let me take you on a trip. Let me take you on a trip. Pay a fucking bill. Pay a bill. Pay a goddamn bill. Shit. No, I don't want to fucking go to Miami. They just increased my health insurance, bitch. Call Kaiser and put your fucking car down. Please. <laughs> my God. Y'all won't leave me alone. Y'all won't leave me alone. Can we get on the phone? No, get on the phone with Billing. Don't, don't talk to me. Talk to Billing. Every single day, women let men know exactly what type of men they want and they need. They want provider and protector males. They want family men like me, the ones that you will call a simp. Men who will open a door for them. Pull out their chair for them. Take them out on a meal and pay the bill. Not expecting anything else in return because her company, her time, her conversation was more than enough. Men who lead with respect, courtesy, love, and their wallet. It's crazy how so many modern males claim to be ballers. Want to be up in clubs and throwing $1 bills around. Pretending they're something they're not, pretending they have more money than what they actually have. But then they are the first to want to go 50-50 at IHOP or Applebee's or TGI Fridays because they're afraid they're going to get used for their $60 meal. <laughs> Just be honest and say you can't afford to date. One thing that my wife has always loved about me is I'm a provider. I give everything I have. And early on in our marriage, I went without. Just so she and my kids would have everything they needed. My wife and I haven't always lived as comfortable as we do now. When we first got married 12 years ago, she was an STNA. She was a state trained nursing assistant. Caring for elderly people at minimum wage. I was working two jobs and I picked up a paper route from 3 to 6 a.m. to make extra money to pay for her nursing school, to pay for our roach-infested apartment in the hood. Then six years ago, we bought our first house, and now we're closing on an even bigger house, our second house. I have never complained about having to work my ass off for my family. I've never asked to go 50-50 on nothing because I'm a protector and a provider and a maintainer of my wife and my family. No strings attached. The reason why you modern males have so many issues in the dating market is because y'all a bunch of liars. Y'all pretending to be something you're not. Y'all a bunch of soft guys wanting your woman to take care of you and pay for everything. And then whenever you do pay for something, you expect her to put out for it. The problem is not women. The problem is soft, modern males and this new warped version of masculinity. Try being a provider. Try being respectful. Try leading with your wallet to show and prove that you can be a provider. Don't expect nothing in return for providing. It's really not that hard. I'm going to end this video here. If you enjoyed the video, Please do me a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment below. All those things help a small growing channel like mine grow faster. And as a content creator, I really love interacting with y'all and reading your comments. So if anything I said in this video, or if any of the clips I showed, 
triggered you or made you feel some type of way, let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. Last but not least, my new book, The Burden of Blood, A Generational Curse, is out. Go on to Amazon or Audible and get your copy today. I promise you won't be disappointed. All that being said, know your angry biracial loves you. I appreciate you. And most of all, be safe. It's angry biracial.